probably and for some amount of time, say two seconds, because we think that that's about what it's going to take to get into the, onto the piece of paper. So we drag in a weight block, and the weight block is the number of milliseconds that you want the robot to wait for. So what's going to happen is the motors are going to start, and then we're going to wait for a while. Um, and we'll wait in this case for two seconds, which is 2,000 milliseconds, because we think that that's what it's going to take to get us to the other side of the table. And at the end of the two seconds, we want to stop the motors. So again, we drag in a motor module um, for motor port one, and this time we set it to stopped, which is 127, and say OK. And then we drag in another motor module, this time for motor port two, and we set that one to stopped, which is 127. So now our program um, starts both motors, waits for two seconds, and then stops both motors. And during the wait, they just keep running. And so let's give that a try. We can take the we can take the robot. Um, and put it on. The, we can first download the build and download the program, and then we can put it on the table and see if it gets into the box. Now, to build and download the program, there's this build and download button up here in the toolbar. You just click it, and now the program gets built. You can see the status of the build going on right down here, and then it says it was successfully built. You want to download the program, and you say yes. And as soon as it's finished downloading, one thing that will happen is that the robot will just start moving. So you might want to have it up on a, on a roll of tape or on something just to lift the wheels off the ground so it doesn't just start when you're first programming it. Um, after we do this, what we want to do is just put the thing onto the table and then give it a try and see how far it goes in two seconds and it gets into the box. So we're going to start at a white line and then we're going to drive and see what happens. So here we go. Okay, turn it off, turn it on, and there's two seconds of driving and it doesn't quite make it. So I guess what we need to do now is modify our program and see if we can get it to go a little bit longer. So instead of two seconds, why don't we try um, three seconds? So we change the 2,000 this time to 3,000 because that's one more second and it will, that it will drive for. So instead of driving, instead of, so we'll start the motors and we'll wait for three seconds and then we'll stop the motors. And let's see what that does. Again, we just build and download the program. We just made this little change. Um, it says it's uh, compiled successfully, and now we want to download it. And so here it goes. It's downloading the program into the robot controller. And after it's finished, we'll give it another try. Okay, here we go. The robot's driving forward, driving forward, up, oh, but it still doesn't quite make it. So we need to go a little bit longer to get it onto the white piece of paper. So let's just make one more change and see if we can get it to work. So we come over here to the weight block. And let's try another half a second. So the half a second will be 500. So we'll make this 3,500. Say OK. Build and download. I think you're getting the hang of this now. And say yes. And now it's downloading the program into the robot controller. And, and then we'll put it onto the table and try that and see if it works. Um, and see if we can get it to stop into, in the box. Okay, that's it. That's all you have to do to write a program to uh, autonomously drive the robot and get it to stop someplace. So what we want to do now is just take this program that we've written and um, we're going to save it. And because uh, we, we're going to be able to use this thing again later. So to save it, you just say save project and it asks you where you want to put it. And I'm going to save it in a, in a, a file which is called uh, drive, drive to line. So we'll just rename this to drive to line, oh, actually drive to paper, okay, and our program is now saved, and that's all we have to do. What we want to do now is write a program that demonstrates the use of sensors, and the particular sensor that we want to use is the ultrasonic rangefinder, which is a really cool sensor you can put on your robot that measures distance, and it tells you um, how far away the robot is from um, an object that's in front of it. Um, the way you use it is you have to connect the sensor. It's got two um, two wires connect two wires from it, and you have to connect one to an interrupt line and one to a digital input. Um, in our case, you can see it's connected to uh, interrupt one and digital input eleven. To make the thing work, um, we first well to make this program, we first want to erase our old program which we had just by clicking a new project, and it's okay to do that since we saved it. And and then um, to get this going. We go to inputs and we select an ultrasonic sensor and we have to start it going. So we said that's an interrupt port 1 and it's on um, digital port, um, output port 11. So we say OK. 
And then we want to, over and over again, the whole idea of this program is that if the distance is greater than 12, we want to drive forward. Otherwise, we want to stop. And the 12 is just an arbitrary distance. It will be about, end up being about 6 inches when it finally stops. So to do something over and over again, we use a while loop. So we drag the while loop into the program and we say while 1. And what 1 means is um, it's, a, it's a value which is always non zero, it's always true. And so the loop runs forever. So what happens in our program is that anything which is inside of the braces in the while loop will just go over and over and over again. It will run continuously um, while this expression is true. And in the case of 1, it's always true. So it just runs forever, it never stops. So what do we want to do here? Well, we want to get the value from the um, ultrasonic sensor. We want to get its distance. And, and we want to store that and then check to see if it's greater than 12. And so to store it, we need a variable to store it in. And a variable is simply a, uh, um, a, a named value that uh, you can store a number in. Now, the, the value that comes back from the ultrasonic sensor is a uh, unsigned integer. So we select unsigned integer. And we'll give it a name. Um, and we'll just take, take distance. That's a good name for the distance that comes back. You can make it anything you want. Um, and so now we have to get that distance. So we just you go to the ultrasonic sensor again, drag one in. We say, this time, get. And we're getting it from interrupt port 1 and uh, digital output port 11. And this time, we're returning the value, we're retrieving the value to distance. Since we said get, it now gives us a place to retrieve the value to. So we say OK. So this gets the distance from the ultrasonic sensor. And now, um, we want to check that distance. And the, to check something, to test the value, use an if statement. So we drag in an if statement, and we say if distance is greater than 12. OK? And if it is, we want to drive forward. So we put everything inside of here. If distance is greater than 12, it'll execute all the blocks which are in between these braces on the if block. And so we want to do what? Well, we just want to drive the motors forward. And we remember to do that, we take motor number one and we make it go clockwise. And then we drag in another motor module. This is now motor number two. And we want it to go counterclockwise. That will be full speed forward. And that will be going forward while the distance is greater than 12. If the distance is not greater than 12, we want to stop. So we drag in an else block. Okay, an else block is a block that goes with an if statement that says that um, if, the, if the if statement is true, if the expression in here is true, distance greater than 12, it does these blocks, else it does the blocks that we're going to put in here. And in this case, we want to stop the robot. So we're going to drag in motor module 1 and set it to stopped. Then we're going to drag in motor module 2 and set that to stopped. Motor module 2 and set it to stopped. And that is our entire program. So you can see all, what we're doing is we're starting the ultrasonic sensor and then we're going to go forever and just keep retrieving the distance. And if it's greater than 12, we're going to drive forward with motor, motors 1 and 2. And if it's uh, not greater than 12, that's the else, we're going to stop. And that's the whole program. So to test it, we uh, build and download it, just like before. There it goes. It's building. And now it's uh, successful. So we download it into the robot controller. And, and if this works, then what will happen is we'll be able to drive um, forward until just before we get to the telephone, which is on the table here, and then it will stop. Because um, that, that will be when the distance is not greater than 12. So let's try We're driving forward, and then we stop. So it's a pretty simple program to write, and, and I think that um, this is a, just a good example of just using sensors with your robot. When you go to a VEX competition, um, the match is actually composed of two parts. There's the autonomous part, and there's the operator control part. Now, to make it really convenient for you to walk back and forth between the two without having to reprogram your robot, um, there are things called competition templates that let you uh, write both the autonomous program and the operator control program and store them in the robot controller at the same time. To use a competition template, you say File, and then Open Project, and then for the file type, select Easy C Template. And you see a whole list of templates uh, show up in this uh, Open Easy C Template window. Now, one of them is the FEC 2006 competition template, which is the one that you want. And you can see that it says that it's a 45 second um, autonomous period followed by an operator controlled period. So we open that one. Once it's open, if you look under user functions um, in the palette, you can see there's an autonomous function and an operator control function. If we click on the autonomous function, these blocks, the ones which are right here, 
that you put in here are the ones which will be run during the autonomous period and these blocks in the operator control function are the ones that will be run during the operator control.